Hello friends, welcome to Digitimento Education. My name is Utkarsh Padhyay and this is the Electronic Device and Circuits Lecture 3. I believe that you must have gone through the Lecture 1 and Lecture 2. So let's start, let's begin this lecture. So I hope uh, that you must have gone through the basic concept that I, uh, that I basically taught you in the last two lectures. So the first topic of this lecture is uh, Let's quickly go through some of the terminology, some of the terms which uh, basically you frequently encounter in, uh, you will frequently encounter in the EDC subject. So first one is uh, the current. So current we know is defined as the rate of change of uh, charge. So I is equal to dQ by dt amperes. So these are some basic terminologies, if you know it's good. Then we move on to drift current. So, so drift current basically is defined as the flow of the current to the material or device under the influence of the electric field intensity. So whenever there is a presence of the electric field intensity, the drifting of charge carriers results into the drifting of charge carriers results into drift current. So it is the flow of current in the material under the influence of of electric field intensity so do not confuse drift current with the diffusion current diffusion current basically takes place whenever there is a diffusion of the charge carries in the material the resultant the resulting current is known as diffusion current whenever the charge carriers move from high concentration to low concentration this results into the flow of the current and that current is known as diffusion current okay now so third point is leakage current this is important to understand this leakage current is also referred to as the minority carrier current or reverse saturation current or thermally generated current. So whenever you encounter leakage current, it means the thermal thermally generated current or reverse saturation current or minority carrier current is basically known as minority carrier current or reverse saturation current reverse saturation current or thermally generated current thermally thermally generated current so this current is generated due to minority carriers which are generated because of temperature hence this current is also called thermally generated current so whenever there is whenever there is a change in the uh, change in the temperature, this lead to the generation of the minority charge carriers, and the current generated is known as minority carrier current or thermally generated current. So the, this current is generated generated due to minority carriers, which are generated. which are generated because of temperature hence this current is also called as thermally generated current okay this must be clear to you so also this this is important to note down that it is independent of the applied voltage that is the current is saturated with respect to the applied voltage hence the name is saturation current so it does not does not depend on depend on voltage that is the current is saturated 
और कॉन्स्टेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एप्लाइड वोल्टेज हेंस कॉल्ड एस रिवर्स सैचुरेशन करंट ओके सो इफ वी बेसिकली कंपेयर द वैल्यूज ऑफ द करंट ऑफ द रिवर्स सैचुरेशन करंट इन जर्मेनियम एंड सिलिकन सो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट टू नोट डाउन दैट जर्मेनियम इज मोर अनस्टेबल देन सिलिकन विच मीन्स दैट i not in germanium is greater than i not i not in silicon reverse saturation current in germanium is greater than i not in silicon in germanium the unit of reverse saturation current is in microamperes and it is in nanoamperes in silicon so silicon is more thermally stable than germanium so we can say silicon is more thermally stable stable than germanium that's why we mostly prefer silicon over germanium in making the semiconductors okay so general preference is silicon general preference is silicon also the abundance is there huge abundance of silicon is there in the environment so that's why there are some important factors that i am going to discuss soon so for better performance since since we for for a for a better performance of any device we want the system we want that particular thing to be stable they should be thermally stable so for better performance for better performance i not should be should be as small as possible as small as possible okay now in digital electronics and switching application silicon is preferred okay silicon is preferred if leakage currents are small temperature effect on the material and device is less and therefore better thermal stability so small i not means better thermal stability so it directly it it is uh, i not is dependent on temperature and uh, the relationship let me just write in in a different color so i not t2 at t2 temperature is i not t1 temperature 2 to the power t2 minus t1 upon 10 okay where t2 is greater than t1 okay so i not t2 is greater than i not is equal to i not t1 2 to the power t2 minus t1 upon 10 this is in degree celsius okay so from here we can say it is important to know that for every for every 1 degree rise 1 degree celsius rise in temperature i not increases by 7% So for every one degree rise in temperature, I not increases by seven percent. Okay. And I not doubles for every ten degree rise in temperature. This is important. So for every one degree rise in temperature, I not increases by seven percent, and I not doubles for every ten degree rise in temperature these two points are very important and it's important for you to remember and you anyhow, anyhow anyhow have to remember these two points because most of the concepts are dependent on these most of the questions are dependent on these now let's discuss about the operating temperatures 
okay operating temperature what was the point let me just see uh, four. this point is four okay the operating temperature let us discuss, discuss about that so for germanium for germanium operating temperature is is the operating temperature range is smaller than that of operating temperature of silicon so for germanium the operating temperature is from minus 60 degree celsius to plus 75 degree celsius so this is the operating temperature range for uh, uh, of silicon and maximum of which is uh, 75 degree celsius for silicon it is minus 60 degrees celsius to plus 175 degrees celsius maximum operating temperature is 175 degree celsius so operating temperature range of silic of germanium is less than that of silicon okay let's move to the next next theory topic there is some point a very basic point that you should know okay uh normal normal working temperature normal working temperature all semiconductors all semiconductors must be operated below 400 kelvin the reason behind which i will tell you i will tell you later 400 kelvin why have we basically set 400 kelvin as a benchmark which uh, uh, which which we should follow and we should operate all the semiconductors below this particular temperature there is some concept called minimum conductivity beyond this particular temperature your n type semiconductors start behaving like p type semiconductors so this is the reason uh, basic, this is basic reason just to give just to give a succinct overview of it i will tell you in the later section of this lecture okay sixth is resistivity resistivity let me explain it so resistivity also called as specific resistance of a material it's also called as specific re specific resistance of a material okay so we know this thing that uh, it is denoted by rho and the unit is ohm meter or it is ohm centimeter ohm meter or ohm centimeter so for intrinsic for intrinsic uh, semiconductor it has an ntc of resistance for intrinsic semiconductor it has ntc of resistance which means that resistivity decreases with increase in temperature your extrinsic semiconductors also exhibit ntc of resistance up to 300 kelvin and after that the extrinsic semiconductors start exhibiting ptc of resistance okay that i will explain in greater detail in the later section okay now let's move on to conductivity now next one is conductivity so it's just the reciprocal of rho the reciprocal of resistivity it denotes current carrying capacity of the material or device so the units of conduct it is represented by sigma unit is basically mo in m or it's simons per centimeter the unit of conductance is simons per centimeter so this will be simons per centimeter so conductivity sigma is defined as 
So conductivity is defined as carrier concentration into into charge value into mobility. Okay. This is how it is defined. It is important. Sigma is carrier concentration into charge into mobility. That's basically the magnitude of the charge. Magnitude of the charge into mobility of the charge carrier. So, conductivity variation of semiconductor may be due to variation in the carrier concentration or variation in the mobility of the charge carriers. So, sigma varies with in carrier with carrier concentration and mobility. So, for intrinsic semiconductor, for intrinsic semiconductor. Your sigma is defined as n q mu n plus p q mu p, where n is the electron concentration per centimeter cube, p is hole concentration per centimeter cube, q q both the same, mu n and mu p, mobility of electrons and mobility of uh, holes. And it is important to note down that your sigma, your conductivity increases with temperature your conductivity increases with so so as we know that in, in this intrinsic semiconductor as the temperature increases mobility of the charge carrier decreases and this will reduce the conductivity by smaller value at the same time because of temperature a large number of covalent bonds will be broken and a large number of charge carriers are suddenly created and this will increase the conductivity by a larger value and the net result it experimentally founded that sigma increases with temperature. So we know this thing that as the temperature increases what happens to the mobility of the charge carrier? Mobility of the charge carrier decreases because we know the relationship between the two because of this but also Covalent broke, uh, so it leads to the break, uh, breaking of many covalent bonds, which leads to the formation of number of charge carriers, resulting into creation of large number of charge carriers. charge carriers so your n or p increase n or p increases so hence resulting into resulting into greater conductivity so from here we can infer that conductivity mainly depends on carrier concentration so the conductivity of the ch uh, conductivity mainly depends upon the carrier concentration mobility of the charge carrier doesn't have any doesn't have greater effect than that of uh, the carrier concentrations so this is important to note down that conductivity mainly depends upon the carrier concentration okay now now seventh topic is current density which we represent by j so current density is uh, defined as current per unit area so j is defined as i upon area ampere per meter square it is also defined as j is equal to sigma e j is equal to sigma e sigma is the conductivity e is the electric field intensity j is the current density 
current per unit area per ampere per meter square that's all you have to know about this j and you will encounter a lot of questions which incorporate the usage of j next topic is uh, 8 is conductivity sensitivity conductivity sensitivity so we know this thing that uh, your for any semiconductor conductivity for intrinsic semiconductor conductivity increases with increase in temperature so they now let's find out let's consider uh, for let's consider the conductivity sensitivity, conductivity sensitivity for germanium and silicon so it is important to note down that for one degree rise in temperature for a one degree rise in temperature conductivity increases by six percent this is for germanium and for one degree rise in temperature conductivity increases by eight percent this is for silicon so silicon has got greater conductivity sensitivity at high temperatures than germanium so when compared to germanium conductivity sensitivity is more in silicon and also silicon is more preferable for high temperature applications and this is due to smaller leakage currents in silicon so from here we can say that silicon has greater conductivity sensitivity and is more thermally stable smaller leakage currents than in case of germanium so preferred at high temperatures and is used in used as high temperature applications okay let me summarize the difference the, the differences between uh, between germanium and silicon what uh, uh, according to their properties according to the corresponding properties let me tabulate these things so that it would be more clear to you this is for germanium this is for silicon first one is atomic number second one is total number of atoms total number of uh, atoms this is per centimeter cube third intrinsic concentration intrinsic concentration which is ni fourth resistivity which is basically intrinsic resistivity fifth leakage current sixth maximum operating temperature seventh mu n mu p dn dp eg not eg 300 okay so let's summarize these things so that you have a clear cut difference between the two this atomic number for germanium is 32 and for silicon it is 14 total number of atoms is 4.421 into 10 to the power 22 and this is 5 into 10 to the power 22 intrinsic concentration it is 2.5 into 10 to the power 13 this is again per centimeter cube 
this is again per centimeter cube and for this it is 1.5 into 10 to power 10 resistivity at this is resistivity that we are calculating at 300 kelvin resistivity at 300 kelvin it is and 45 ohm centimeter and 23 thou sorry ohm centimeter leakage current at 300 kelvin leakage current in 300 kelvin it is in micro amperes this is in nano amperes maximum operating temperature is plus 75 degree and this is plus 175 degree celsius for all these it is low in germanium and this is high these are high in silicon so you have a clear cut difference between the properties of silicon and germanium that we have studied i have summarized all these things here so so that it is more clear to you all okay so let's also summarize the properties of uh, properties of silicon so what are the properties of silicon that makes it uh, a very clear cut candidate to be used in fabrication process and to be preferred over germanium so first one is silicon is more preferred in germanium because of a smaller smaller leakage current smaller leakage current high temperature applications high temperature applications third one is suitable suitable for low power and high power applications available in plethora available in plethora in the environment or on the surface of the earth so this is basically the primary reason for the preference of silicon over germanium in uh, uh, basically making the semiconductor fabricating the semiconductor since it is, since it is available in abundance it is cheapest semiconductor cheapest semi favorable property to get silicon dioxide has favorable property to get silicon dioxide so primary reason why silicon is more popular with the ic manufacturers because of this reaction at 1400 degrees celsius it is combined with oxygen to form silicon dioxide and silicon dioxide has got many applications in semiconductor fabrication process the main disadvantage of this thing is, is a smaller conductivity smaller conductivity so this is the main disadvantage of silicon over germanium uh just make a correction here i made a mistake in writing the thing here so let me just uh, erase this portion uh sorry for that uh, just make a correction here so this is basically your uh, power handling capacity power handling capacity is low in case of your germanium and is high in case of silicon uh mobility of of charge carriers in germanium is greater than that of silicon okay your dn your diffusion co diffusion coefficients in case of germanium is uh, greater than that in silicon and eg not is smaller eg not or eg 300 kelvin is smaller in case of germanium than silicon there's some property that we have already gone through 
okay so silicon has smaller conductivity this is important note down that silicon has smaller conductivity this is the main reason that we uh, th this is the basic disadvantage this is the main disadvantage of silicon over germanium because we know that the mobility of the charge carriers in uh, in germanium as you can say as mobility of charge carriers in germanium is greater than mobility of the charge carriers in silicon this is made advantage smaller conductivity okay now all these discussions mark the end of the basics now let us start with the types of semiconductor so we have intrinsic semiconductor we have p type semiconductor and then we have n type semiconductor we are starting with types of semiconductor so types of semiconductor so we have p type semiconductor your n type semiconductor compensated semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor so here we are first starting with basic intrinsic semiconductor so intrinsic as per the dictionary means pure so it's a pure semiconductor intrinsic means a pure semiconductor so intrinsic semiconductor has a crystalline structure as 0 kelvin okay so intrinsic semiconductor has a crystalline structure at 0 kelvin 0 kelvin which is basically in absolute temperature 0 kelvin or minus 273 degree celsius so it has crystalline crystalline structure at 0 kelvin so let's draw this for example you can see we have the silicon atoms and they form a crystalline structure so each silicon atom has four electrons in this outermost shell okay outermost shell so this basically is the uh, crystalline structure of uh, intrinsic semiconductors these represent the silicon uh, atoms which are basically which basically have each of each of the each silicon atom has the uh, valency of uh, four four electrons in the outermost shell and they all are combined with each other with the covalent bonds these are basically the covalent bonds so we know that semiconductors exhibit covalent bonding insulators exhibit ionic bonding and metals exhibit metallic bonding okay so the other these are basically the covalent bonds so it is important to note that insulators sorry your semiconductors behave behave like insulators at 0 kelvin which is the absolute temperature okay it's worth noting that because there is no movement of the charge carrier so this conductivity is very, very small at this at this temperature so if we increase the temperature your conductivity increases because the number of covalent bonds the, the, the number of the uh, breaking of the covalent bonds increases resulting into the increase in the number of charge carriers in the semiconductor hence increasing the conductivity mobility also has effect with with that is that uh, which decreases with temperature but this does not but uh, the change or the change in the carrier concentration overpowers the change in the mobility with the temperature so let us draw the band diagram for intrinsic semiconductor band diagram of the intrinsic semiconductor looks something like this this is the conduction band this is basically the valence band okay this is built by ec this is represented by ev ev represents the the top of the valence band ec represents the bottom of the conduction band it is empty and here exists completely filled with eight electrons per atom it is completely filled filled with eight electrons per 
atom. This is eg not. This is at zero Kelvin. Just acting as like a into the insulators because there is no movement of the charge carriers from the valence band to the conduction band. So at zero Kelvin, covalent bonding exists in the valence band. No electron in the conduction band. Okay, so when we increase the temperature, covalent bonds will be will be uh, broken, and the electrons will be excited and will break the covalent bond and will become free electrons. So as temperature increases, covalent bonds break, and electrons become free electrons and they will jump from valence band to the conduction band. So if we have a look at the band diagram, if we increase the temperature to 300 Kelvin, suppose this is, conduct, this is valence band and this is conduction band. So So electrons, this is hole and the electrons will jump to the conduction band leaving the absence of the electron at, in the valence band. Absence of electron is referred to as the hole. Hole, is a positive, hole has a positive mass and absence of electron is referred to as a hole. Electron will jump from the valence band to the conduction band and here electrons so this basically increases the conductivity. This is at let's say 300 Kelvin. If we increase the temperature, let's say this is at 300 temp temperature. The temperature has been increased. Okay. So when the temperature, when temperature is increased, electrons jump from valence band to conduction band. leaving the holes in the valence band. Holes represent the, the deficiency deficiency of electrons in covalent bond. So a hole can be anywhere in valence band but cannot be in conduction band. So in intrinsic semiconductors number of holes is equal to number of electrons. Number of holes is equal to number of electrons. So N is equal to P is equal to Ni. Ni is intrinsic carrier concentration. So number of electrons is equal to number of holes is equal to intrinsic carrier concentration. Hole has a positive mass and has a charge of magnitude plus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb while electron has minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb so for a semiconductor we just consider the semiconductor this is for left position this is the right position if the electrons n move from left to right your electron current which is ie goes from right to left this is ie which is known as electron current move from right to left holes if move from right to left 
it is accompanied by the whole current so this is basically a whole current this is a whole so whole moves from if whole moves from right to left the the current whole current will move from left to right the total current will be from right to left this will be equal to in plus ip in plus ip but in is greater than ip as mu n is greater than mu p since mu n is greater than mu p so we know this in the current density depends upon the mobility of the charge carriers so in is greater than ip because mobility of electron is greater than mu p okay in a semiconductor electron contributes contributes the current current from the conduction band and holes contribute current from the valence band so total current is sum of electron current and hole current so total current is basically the sum of electron current and hole current so with this i end the lecture and i would request you to go through the lecture to go through the concepts because electronic device and circuit is the subject from which most of the theoretical questions are asked numerical questions are also asked but mainly they focus on the theoretical questions as well numerical part will come after the explanation of these concepts without which you won't be able to solve a single one you won't be able to solve a single question so it is better it's important to go through the concepts once so with this i end that lecture thank you very much